Hey, this is Dr. Barry. In this short video, I want to talk to you about something that scares a lot of people, and that's high cholesterol levels. Uh, I've had any number of messages from people saying, oh my God, I started keto and I've lost 20 pounds and I feel great and my psoriasis is gone and my heartburn's gone, but my cholesterol went up and my doctor freaked out and when it puts me on a pill, what should I do? So that's what this video is about. Now, if you know anyone who has high cholesterol or who is worried about their cholesterol or who is hesitant to start the ketogenic way of eating because they're afraid it'll raise their cholesterol, please share this video with them on their Facebook page or on Instagram or Twitter or uh, Vero, the new one, right? Have you heard of Vero yet? It's a new social media platform. But share this so I can help these people relax and take a breath and stop worrying about the things that aren't really important to their health and start worrying about the things that really are important. Now let's talk about the ketogenic diet and cholesterol. Is it a big deal? Do we care? Why do we care? Why don't we care? Okay, so let's talk about first of all what we're trying to do with a ketogenic diet or any diet, right? We're trying to improve the quality and length of our life. We want to have a nice long health span where we're, we're able to, to live happily and disease free and enjoy our life. But we also want to have a long lifespan as well. But we don't want to have a long lifespan without a long health span. Does that make sense? And so if you live to 100, but you're in the nursing home after a stroke from the time you're 70 until you're 100, that's not, that's not the goal. That's not what we want. We want you to be a hundred and healthy and vigorous up until you're 99 and then something happens and then you die and that's that's how it is that's life right you live you die but we don't we want you to have a good long healthy lifespan and so what we're trying to do with the ketogenic diet and with every single recommendation that Nisha and I give you is we're trying to decrease your risk of bad things happening. And so when it comes to cholesterol we all think about heart disease, heart attack, heart failure, stroke and so that's what we're going to talk about today. What we're really trying to care about when we talk about cholesterol and, and risk factors like that is, will this increase my risk of having a heart attack or will it lower my risk of having a heart attack? And that's really the question you should be asking about the ketogenic way of eating. Not will it raise my cholesterol or will it raise my LDL? Cholesterol and LDL are just what we thought was a marker of your risk of heart disease, right? That's what we use cholesterol for. Cholesterol being high in and of itself is meaningless. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't make you feel bad. It doesn't make you look bad or smell bad if your cholesterol is high. What we thought there for a few years before we knew better, like we do now, is that having a high cholesterol increased your odds of having a heart attack. That's why we cared about it. That's why medications like the statin drugs and the fibrates came on the market and made billions upon billions of dollars is because we thought as doctors before we knew better that we were lowering your risk of heart attack. That's why we gave you that pill every day to lower your cholesterol, okay? If, if, if in fact, high cholesterol has nothing whatsoever to do with your risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, then of course it's dumb to take that statin that Lipitor, that Zocor, that Pravacol, any of those things, why would you want to take them if a high cholesterol really doesn't increase your risk of heart attack? Does that make sense? And so for all these years, we used high cholesterol as a marker, what we thought was a marker for elevated risk of having a heart attack or heart disease. Well, it turns out that the research shows virtually without exception that the amount of saturated fat you eat and the, the amount of cholesterol you eat has nothing to do with your risk of heart attack, heart disease, heart failure, or stroke. It's a myth. We thought that we knew something, and that's, that's when doctors are really their most dangerous, is when we think we know something, but we really don't know what we think we know. And that's kind of how it was. We were tricked by some early research done on cholesterol and saturated fat. And then, of course, the big drug drug companies picked that up and ran with that because they sniffed billions of dollars in the air. And so they, of course, did what every business does. They tried to make more money and they did a great job at it at all of our expenses. Right. They made the doctors look like buffoons and they made the patients pay money for a pill that could have induced side effects, either uh, annoying or serious and really didn't protect them from anything. 
So all the research, all the big meaningful research shows that the amount of saturated fat you eat, the amount of cholesterol you eat has nothing to do with your risk of heart attack or stroke. It just doesn't. Okay. So there are still some vegans and still some doctors who just don't know better yet who will tell you that, oh, if you eat cholesterol, it'll raise your cholesterol. But a simple Google search and an hour's worth of reading, even by a high school dropout, will quickly realize that's dumb. That's not true at all. And so stop worrying about eating the amount, whatever amount of cholesterol you want to eat. Your body actually makes 3,000 milligrams of cholesterol every day. Why would your body do that? Well, maybe because every single cell membrane in your body is made partially of cholesterol. If I were able to magically reach through your screen and grab all your cholesterol out of your body right now, do you know what would happen? Well, some some doctors would have you believe that you would be so much healthier. But in reality, what would happen is that you would die within minutes. Okay, probably under a minute, you would be dead if I removed all the cholesterol from your body. Your brain and your nerves are built of cholesterol. All of your uh, major sex hormones and your adrenal hormones use cholesterol as the backbone that they're built on. All of your cell membranes, the cell membrane of every single cell in your body has cholesterol in the membrane. The membrane will not function if you don't have cholesterol. So how does it make any sense that this thing that's absolutely vital for life for the last 100,000 years, now magically, once Lipitor and Zocor are on the market, is really bad for you and you should try to lower it and not eat any of it at all. You see the, the, the illogic nature of that? There's no common sense in that at all. That's silly, right? Okay. Your body needs cholesterol for hundreds, if not thousands, of biochemical reactions to make your cell membranes, to make your brain, and to make your nerves. It's dumb to act like you don't need cholesterol. It's silly to act like cholesterol is bad for you. Your body has multiple mechanisms to ensure that you have enough cholesterol. Only after we lowered everyone's cholesterol with the statin drugs did we start having an Alzheimer's epidemic. I'm not saying it caused it. I'm saying it sure does look related, don't you think? So there are some poor doctors out there and some poor dietitians and some poor nutritionists who are behind on the reading. And they'll scare you. They'll say, oh gosh, this stupid ketogenic diet made your total cholesterol go up by 50 points. I'm going to put you on stupid tour and that's going to re reduce your risk of heart attack and stroke. Well, don't be mad at that doctor or dietitian. They just need to do their reading. They're a little behind. They're probably busy with their personal life and they haven't caught up on their reading yet. Give them some time and maybe they'll catch up. So if you, so my, the, the take home message is, Stop worrying about your total cholesterol. It is meaningless, okay? You can really stop worrying about your LDL levels because when you really look at the research uh, objectively, there's almost no research that shows that your LDL level is meaningfully related to your risk of heart attack and stroke. So if you shouldn't worry about those things, what should you worry about? Well, I'm going to tell you. That's, that's the extra bonus of this video. As I told you what not to worry about, now I'm going to tell you what to worry about, okay? But seriously, if you've got a, a friend or your dad or mom or your uncle or your cousin or your next door neighbor's been worried to death about their cholesterol, please share this video with them so they can take a breath and relax because it doesn't mean anything bad if your cholesterol is high. It's actually much more dangerous if your cholesterol is low. OK, now, what should you worry about in order to decrease your risk of heart attack, stroke and other bad things that happen to you later in life? What you want to actually worry about is the real risks, what really raises your odds, what really loads the dice against you for heart attack, stroke and other uh, serious life ending chronic diseases. So the, the one that you can measure without even going to the doctor, without even getting on the Internet is your waist to height ratio. This is a huge risk factor if it's wrong, okay? And I'm going to tell you what to do. You're going to measure your waist around where your belly button is. Not Now, I know you guys like to wear your belt really low and let your belly hang over that and act like that's your waist. Yeah, that ain't your waist, dude, okay? Your waist is where your belly button is. So measure your waist at your belly button, either in inches or in centimeters. Then measure your height, standing up good and straight in either inches or centimeters. And then you're going to divide your waist by your height. And so you're going to divide inches by inches or centimeters by centimeters, and that will give you a number. And if your number is below 
0.5, you're in good shape. That's good. But if your number's above 0.5, if it's 0.5 or above, you're at increased risk for a heart attack, for a stroke, for heart failure, for heart disease. That's been proven time and time again. It's actually much more meaningful than your BMI or your body mass index, your, your waist to height ratio. That's a big deal. And so if your ratio is 0.5 or higher, that doesn't mean just give up and go get a box of donuts. That means, hey, guess what? You can fix that. You can decrease your risk by fixing your waist to height ratio. Now, you can't make yourself taller, probably. So you can figure out what you can probably work on in that ratio. The next thing to worry about is your triglyceride levels. If your triglyceride levels are elevated, your fasting triglycerides, then you're definitely proven to be at increased risk of heart attack. That's been shown in multiple studies. Now, triglycerides are in the lipid panel when you get your lab work checked. And so you would think that eating fat makes your lipids go up, makes your triglycerides go up. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Eating fructose, sugar, starches, simple carbs, that's what makes your triglycerides go up. And that's what you need to avoid to decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke. Also what you need to decrease your waist circumference. Okay. The next thing is a fasting insulin level. If your fasting insulin level is even one-tenth of a point high, you're at increased risk of heart attack and stroke. That's been shown several times. If your hemoglobin A1c is elevated, the hemoglobin A1c gives us a three-month average of what your blood sugar has been running. If that's even one-tenth of a point elevated, you're at increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Now, the more it is elevated above normal, the more your risk it looks like, okay? But even a lot of doctors will say, oh, your A1C is 5.9. That's pretty good. We'll just watch that. Just, you know, keep doing what you're doing. That's terrible advice. If your A1C is even one-tenth of a point high, you need to get busy and you need to fix that. And you fix that by fixing your diet. Okay, the next one is your inflammatory markers. Inflammation has been shown time and time again to increase your risk of heart attack and stroke. So you want to make sure that your your C-reactive protein is normal. You want to make sure your SED rate or your ESR is normal. You want to make sure your ferritin level is normal. You want to make sure all those kinds of markers are normal. And one uh, one other lab that, that you need to make sure is within normal limits is your C-peptide level. Uh, it gives you basically the same information as a fasting insulin, but you don't really have to be fasting to check the C-peptide. If it's even one-tenth of a point high, you're at risk of heart attack and stroke, okay? So stop worrying about cholesterol. Start worrying about your fasting insulin, your A1C, your triglycerides, and your C-peptide, and your markers of inflammation, because they are the true markers that you are at increased risk of heart attack and stroke. The cholesterol level is meaningless. Stop worrying about it, okay? So now let me ask you a question before we go. This is important. Who would you like to see me collaborate with? I've been collaborating with a few people on Facebook and on Instagram, and and I've got some stuff coming up on YouTube, but I would love to collaborate with other people because I feel like it helps me reach people who haven't heard this message yet. Leave in the comments below the name of the person you'd love to see me collaborate with, and that will help me so much because I really want to help more people get healthier, okay? If you haven't, please consider subscribing to this channel. That way, every time I get a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know. Like I said earlier, share this on your social media. There are so many people who are worried to death and afraid to try the ketogenic way of eating because they're afraid it'll raise their damn cholesterol level. Let's educate them so they can stop worrying, okay? And as always, if, if my my messages, my videos really have touched your heart and really have maybe improved your health a little bit, consider subscribing on my Patreon page down below. You can sign up quickly and throw a buck or two my way, and it helps give me and Nisha more time to reach more people and save more lives. This is Dr. Barry, and I'll see you next time.